Welcome back to Life in Balance. This week's show is going to feature some really special information. I have with me today Pat Wanas. She is an aromatherapist. She is a hairdresser. She owns Metamorphous Salon. Uh, she does all types of different uh, aspects of essential oils and organic hair care, and everything is clean, healthy. So, if, you know, we're going to get into that in this show. So, I want to thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, definitely. And so we have tons of information and we're going to start right off by, you know, aromatherapy is a is a kind of an interesting when you talk about aromatherapy, a lot of people don't even know what really we're talking about. So, I think the first thing is to really share with the audience, what is aromatherapy? Well, aromatherapy is the use of essential oils um, and ba basically it's just breathing them in. And it will, it will heighten your whole perception of whatever mood that you're in. So if you're in a bad mood or maybe you're feeling a little tense, you know, diffusing a little lavender will just help relax you and calm you down. Awesome. And, you know, just so everybody knows, Pat is the expert in my office. We work very closely together in a yes, lot of different do. things that we do in the office for our patients as we in, 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 you know, involve aromatherapy and essential oils in their care because yes. we do do that in the office. And so she's my expert and uh, definitely you're blessed to have her here today for sure. Um, and, you know, one of the things I don't know if I've ever shared with you, but one of the things that I did when I was going through chiropractic school is when it came time to do the finals and all the clinical exams and everything that I was, I was doing, stressful times for sure, but we used aromatherapy, we used, uh, we used rosemary and those types of things around us while I was going through that process of studying to open up the channels in the brain to make sure that I was at my best. And so it, it was a strategy that we incorporated even down to when before I even was a chiropractor and started on the journey to become that, uh, it was part of that journey. And so I'm very passionate about how effective this can really do uh, some significant changes to your life. And so I'm excited about that. Um, tell me a little bit, how did you become an expert in essential oils? Oh, well, that is, that has been a long journey. Um, I, as a kid, I used to love to just mix things together. Um, but I really started about five years ago when I was first introduced uh, to essential oils at my first wellness seminar. And it was through um, a, a company, and you know the best way to get started is to start using them. And as I started using them, uh, you know, it just opened me up to asking more questions. And I had more questions than people were answering me. And that's when I realized I need to study and I need to learn. And there happened to be a school here that had opened up, and I was a part of the first class. And I studied as I was starting my business, and I became a certified aromatherapist. That is fantastic because essential oils, we've talked about this before, is it is really an interesting uh, aspect of healthcare because it's very under misunderstood. Yes. Uh, it's, there's a lot, not a lot of experts out there. There's not a lot of information as to what is the right steps to utilize. Um, so it's been, it is hard when somebody's trying to think about, I want to get into essential oils. You know, they can be misled by a lot of the marketing, marketing propaganda out there that this is good for you and they might be going in the wrong direction. So it's very important to understand those concepts of, uh, of essential oils. And you have an expert right here in our town, right in our practice that you can access uh, to get the right information and take the right steps. And that's really exciting. Uh, and for me especially, because uh, my patients' lives have been changed in a lot of ways from some of the things that you've put together for our office, and that's really exciting. Um, what are the differences with essential oil? Let's talk about that as we get into the education. Is there a difference if I use this product or that product? What is the difference? And even maybe the differences between using lavender versus rosemary. What, what, what is the difference there? Does it have a difference? There's major differences in essential oils. And well, I'm going to first start with the different brands. There's a lot of brands that are out there today, but 75% of them are adulterated, which means that what you're getting in the bottle is not what's truly what's in there. Um, one of the things that's starting to come out in the industry, and there's uh, a lot of FDA uh, crackdowns that's happening with the essential oil companies is the word therapeutic, because as soon as you put therapeutic on a bottle, you are allowing it to be governed by a body that's going to tell them what to do. And right now, the FDA has no regulation when it comes to essential oils. So therefore, legally, essential oil cannot be called therapeutic. Okay. So you have to really do your research and you have to know what it is that you're using. and. You know, just because something may cost more doesn't mean that you're getting, you know, the right type of oil either. You know, one of the things that you do want to look for is the word organic, because when something is organic, it's gone through the scrutiny and knowing that there are absolutely no pesticides that are in that oil. Because you have to remember, 
if you're going to be putting it onto your skin, 26 seconds, it's in your bloodstream. That's right. And not only that, though, but a, um, a pure essential oil will pass the blood-brain barrier. So if it's carrying a pesticide, guess what's going to happen? It's, it, it's going to do a whole lot more damage than good. And what a lot of people don't understand, it's that the, it's the... the, the um, the gradual of the subtlety. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a little bit at a time, a little bit out of a time, and then all of a sudden something happens and you're you're sensitive to an essential oil where you've never been before and then you kind of wonder why. And it may not be the oil itself as to what is actually in that oil. In that oil. And that's, the ingredients are key. And that we've talked about that with nutrition, with foods, with supplements. And here we look at oils and it's the same scenario. You've got to understand what you're putting on, what you're putting into your body. Correct. because that is critical to understand um, if it's clean because a lot of these pesticides that you mentioned mm -hmm. people don't understand that they turn into pathogens they yes. turn into uh, um, you know basically disease causing agents in the body free radicals uh, it creates a lot of problem in the body and a lot of stress uh, that your body has to deal with and that's not the optimal for you to, to deal with and, and in, in, especially when it crosses the brain, the brain blood barrier because yes. that is a critical protection system in the body that keeps your brain functioning and, and protected. And when you can cross that barrier, it's got to be really careful with what, what's put in it for sure. So that's interesting. What about the different types or uh, products that are out there? Like, say, for instance, I know that there's, there's Deuterra, there's Young Living, there's all these different things. And it, it's almost like you get into the camps of, like, Chevy versus Ford. You know, I'm a Deuterra and you're a Young Living. Oh, um, you know, is there a significant difference? You know, people should probably know about that. Yes, there is a major significant difference with the essential oils. Um, I myself have been a part of a multi-level marketing company, and I'm, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, it's very important for people to do their due diligence because what you want to look for is transparency. And when I say transparency, it's all about, you know, you're not sure what's in that essential oil. So you want to be able to go on to their website and to see if they release any of the GC reports. And the GC reports what they will do is they will break down of the components that are in the essential oil and that should be made public and if it's not made public then the company is not transparent and I personally I would question about whether I would continue doing business with them yeah well that's because you just don't know what's really in the component that right. you're using and then we go back into what we were just talking about pesticides going into your body or pathogens and and create a lot of different issues in the body that are that are that are Allosteric, as I call it. I always teach yeah. people about allosteric load in the body. And that really breaks down your immune system, your metabolism, and a world of effects can happen long term if that continues. And so including the sensitivity that you're talking about. Oh, absolutely. You know, and so, and that's really a powerful thing. Knowledge in, in, in involving essential oils and aromatherapy, knowledge is going to be your best defense yes. to make sure that you can use these because they are a very powerful tool to transform health and, and get away from chronic issues, acute issues, uh, and things that you've been dealing with for a long period of time. You can really shift health, so that's very exciting. Um, what should people look for when purchasing an essential oil? One word, organic. Okay. And then when you have the organic, what you want to look for is that organic seal. You want to be able to know that it has some type of certification behind it that it is organic. Because at that point, you know of what you're getting. It's going to be pure. You're, you're not going to have um, any type of adulteration that's in there. Yeah. And that's really big because when you talk about an oil like, like what we're talking about with essential oils, they don't need additives. They don't need recipients. No. They don't need things added to them to transfer into a cell membrane. The body actually knows these are all natural components. And so the bioavailability or the biosynthesis that people might ask and talk about in the body, they should be able to do that without any problems. They don't need to have any additives or preservatives because it is an oil. Right. And so mm -hmm. those are key things to look for as red flags when you're looking at a product to say, hey, this is, might be something that I don't want to use because it's got, you know, why would it have that if it's a pure oil? I've right. always looked at things and said, you know, why in the world are we adding all this? All they want to have is this, you know, and um, and so it's a big key to do that. Um, so that's very important. One of the other things is there uh, is there any types or differences with uh, oils as far as you know? Some people will say it's a concentrate, it's a therapeutic grade, it's it's cut. How is it important to understand those different aspects of oils? Well, again, that's where you have to go on and you have to do your, your due diligence to find out exactly what is in that essential oil. And like I said, most companies will have it right on their website. And if they don't, you can email them. 
and you can email their cons your concerns and you can go by what it is that they have to say. But I do have to mention that one of the reasons why that there's so much adulteration that happens in the market is because um, we're going to be headed towards a crisis with essential oils because of there's three major multi-level marketing companies that's here in the States and they've made essential oils um, very popular, which is a good thing, but the bad side of it is is that people, they don't know how to use them, they're overusing them. and um, you know, these are coming from plants, like something like sandalwood. It takes 32 years for a sandalwood tree to reach maturity before they're able to use the bark to make into an essential oil. So when you have a, a sandalwood that's just being overused or not being used properly, well, it's going to cause um, a shortage in the industry. Yeah. So companies are going to start adding things into it to start adulterating it just so that they could still have their profits, still have their oil, but it's going to be less of the right. oil and, itself. And so there, you know, that's that, that's where companies that are, uh, you know, in, in a statute where they have to supply right. for the demand that they have, they'll start to synthetically develop and they'll start doing those types of things, and that's when you're not going to get the same effects as if you had the real oils. Correct. And so it, it's critical to understand those types of things for sure. Um, and, and not have an adulterated product that's going to be cut, it's going to be weakened, and so you're not getting the effect. And, it's, and in essence, it devalues essential oils because people say, well, I tried that, it doesn't work. Oh, exactly. You know? Right. And, uh, and that's a big thing in holistic health overall is people give it one shot. Uh, you know, if you get one shot to get that bullet right to get the fix done, and if you don't, then the patient says, oh, it's, it's not going to work. And, and it, a lot of times it takes time and repetition for a lot of things that we do in holistic practice. And essential oils is no different than that. You've got to find the right formulas. You've got to find what your body can attune to, how your body responds to it, and what is the right formulation for you specifically. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the, later, in the, in the second half of the show for sure. So when we take a look at that, how have... Um, as we go through here, you know, I was going to ask you, this is actually great that the question's right here. Um, what is your favorite essential oil for you? And I know the answer to this, but I'm going to let you share it. <laughs> what is your favorite, and, and why do you, you choose that as your favorite essential oil? Well, that changes all the time. But, <laughs> um, I do have a couple of favorites, but right now, my favorite that's going on is helichrysum. I love, love, love helichrysum. Helichrysum is one of those oils that right now, it's, it's, it's on the endangered list. Um, the best helichrysum is going to come from Corsova, which is in France, and so it's because it, it's not just about the plant, but it's about where that plant comes from. So I could even talk about that with lavender. There's so many different types of lavender, and lavender is based on elevation. The higher the elevation, um, the, the different properties that lavender is going to have. So um, helichrysum is just one of those oils. But helichrysum has amazing properties, m amazing healing properties, uh, what it can do in the body, and it's. Um, you know, I put this in um, that blend that I yes. make for your office for, yes. for pain because it it really targets. It's it, you don't need much. You know, we're we're talking like you know one or two drops that I'll put into that, but it's so powerful. And you know, essential oils they work synergistically. You just can't use one. You have to learn how to balance them and use them together. And helichrysum is just one of those oils that will just you know help heal the body, and especially when you're using it with the other essential oils. And the other really interesting thing about helichrysum that they were able to find out is that it helps balance out the thickness of your blood. So it's really great for blood pressure. And when I say that, if your blood is too thick, it thins it. And if your blood is too thin, it thickens it. So when I had first moved here to Florida, which is right about the time that I was involved in uh, with essential oils, you know, I'm from the north, so my blood is a little bit thicker, so it's a little bit harder to get used to the humidity. Well, helichrysum was one of those oils that would help because, again, when you live in a southern climate and you have a lot more humidity, well, what happens is that the blood thins. Yes. And so there's a whole process that you have to go through. Yes, with, there's a, there's a transformation, transformation yes. that has to happen in your body for it to get adequate and adapted to the environment that you're in, and that's huge. Yeah, and helichrysum helped to do that for me. That's awesome. So it helps transition, and that's that's cool as you go through transitions. Um, we want to talk about the tip of the day. We're gonna we're gonna uh, we'll talk a lot more. I have a lot more information about essential oils to talk about with Pat here. Um, but I want to go into the, move into the tip of the day, and we're going to actually make this tip of the day this week about what we're talking about because one of the things that I, I've always asked in the office is, how do I start with essential oils? Where do I begin? Because there's such, so, you know, I'm, I'm lost is what they'll tell me. So I'm going to ask the expert today, you know, how does somebody start? How does somebody get involved with this and know that they're doing the right steps? 
Well, you know, that's a that's a loaded question. That is, <laughs> that is that is a loaded question because there's so many different ways to start. But I think that if you just started with one oil, if you're drawn towards one thing, you know, I mean, if you if anybody wanted to come in, I would take them on a sensory journey and kind of figure out, you know, you know, what is it that you're. Um, that your body resonates with, you know, and you would want to go to that one. But even just starting with something is very, very simple and just start practicing personal aromatherapy. And when I say personal aromatherapy, it's just taking a drop of like one of your favorite essential oils, putting it into the palm of your hand and then placing, cupping your hand over your face, over your nose and your mouth and taking five deep breaths in and deep from the diaphragm and just letting it out and do it do that five times. And that in itself, that goes right into the brain, and that will just change your mood. Okay, awesome, awesome. And when we come back, uh, we'll give you the tip on how to get involved in that and how to take those steps in the office. A lot of people ask me, what is this Nutrimos? What is this program? You know, the amazing thing about Nutrimos is, is it's a program that looks at your entire system and determines why is it that your metabolism isn't controlling fat metabolism the way that it should. There's an entire system in your body that does this, and it gets derailed, it gets off course. And when we're off course, our body starts adding the fat. We want to get away from that. We want to solve the real problem. And on this program, you actually repair that metabolism system as you go through the program. So at the end of this, program, it's not that you had, a, had a, a magical pill, a red or blue pill that made you lose the weight. It's a system and that system is running all the way through the process going forward. All right, we're back. Life and Balance. Um, you know, and again, any information that you want to know about what we're doing here, you can find it on all our social media outlets. You can find information about this. You can find us at VibrantLifeHealthCenter.com. Go to our blog. Our blog is Creating a Healthy Life, Creating, creating Vibrant Healthy Life on the blogger. Um, so you can go there as well. There's tons of places that you can find information about what we're talking about here. And today we're special, you know, we're, we're focusing in on essential oils. And we talked about the tip of the week before we, we uh, left off the air. And I want to get back to that now. And what we're talking about with the tip of the week is essential oils is a big place. There's a lot of different ways to turn and a lot of people get lost at where they start. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion to everybody that asked me that question is to get with an expert that knows. And we have that in our office, which is awesome to really sit down and go over the health goals of what you're looking at so you can really develop a plan to I incorporate essential yes. oils, get results, and not put yourself in danger. And, uh, and so that's really the big tip is to find somebody who's an expert and let them lead you into the first steps into this so that you are very successful and, and you know the, the, the ebbs and tides of this, this type of a treatment when you're going to mm -hmm. incorporate it, which is really awesome. So tell us, you know, one of our favorite subjects that you and I talk about a lot is can essential oils be dangerous if they're not used correctly? And give us some examples. Let's talk about that a little bit. Oh my goodness. Yes, essential oils, they're, they're so overused. You know, everybody thinks that, well, it's natural, it's, an, it, it's, you know, it, it's not a drug, you know, it, so we're just going to just start using them. But when it comes to essential oils, less is more. Less is more because they are so powerful. Take, you know, a, a pure peppermint oil, okay? It, one drop is the equivalent of anywhere from 20 to 25 peppermint tea bags. So, you know, if you're doing, you know, two drops of peppermint in an eight ounce glass of water, I mean, that's really potent. Yes. And, and, and now if you're going to be ingesting it, which is a whole other issue all on its own, if you're going to be ingesting it, you know, it's what it's going to be doing inside the body. I mean, yes, peppermint, it's really, really good for your digestion. And, um, you know, no doubt, I mean, it, as long as you're using an organic product that, that you know doesn't have any pesticides in it, by all means, that you can take a drop and put it into your water. I mean, it is really good for your digestion. Um, but you've got to be careful at that point not to overdo it because right. you can do more damage to the body. You can. And, you know, there's some big issues out there because a lot of people they'll start getting integrated into this and they'll use a non-cut is what I say version where they're not going to cut it they're going to buy the essential oil in the concentrated state and they're going to just start putting that on their bodies using it as almost like a lotion and they don't really realize that is very powerful and it can be dangerous at many levels because a lot of people are on medications and sometimes these things you're don't mix detoxify. and you can create yes. detoxification and if you're not taking the steps nutritionally, dietarily, if you're not taking steps to, to actually clean the body out, 
then you're really starting to create even more of a toxicity and a toxic load in the body that can create more health problems. And so again, that's why it's so important to get an expert like yourself involved in, in the effort yes. so that you can know what you're doing and you don't take those steps. Um, because so many people will, they'll be on these whole list of medications, they come in and they want to make a change and they buy a whole list of products, they buy a starter kit, so to speak, from one of the mass marketers out there, and they start just hammering this stuff out and they're getting un more and more unhealthy, and then they think, well, essential oils is dangerous and I don't want to use that. And really, it was just because they didn't know that they knew what they were doing. Exactly. Exactly. And that's where most people, they're taking essential oils and they're using it at a 100% solution, which is just taking it right out of the bottle and just putting it onto the body. And they're thinking, oh, that's, that's fine. But actually, it's not. Um, because what you always want to do is you always want to put it into a carrier type of a product, whether you're using a fractionated coconut oil or if you're using something like a grapeseed oil. You know, it's it's going to prolong the life of the essential oil in the body, but it's also going to cut down um, how much that you're putting in. I know in my blends, the most strongest blend that I make is a 10% solution, which is really powerful. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, for a medical condition. So a lot of people don't realize um, how important that is to do. And not only that, though, but when you're taking an essential oil, and especially when you're taking it strong, right out of the bottle, the very first thing that it's going to start to do in the body is you're going to detoxify the body. That is the main job of what essential oils do. Um, it doesn't matter which one it is that you're using, but that's what's going to happen. So if you are on a prescription medication, or even worse, if you're on chemo and you hear frankincense is really good, and I'm going to combine mm. that, you are, you, are, you are setting yourself up for failure because now you're going to have a chemical reaction going on inside your body, and yes. your body's going to try to detox, and you don't even realize what it is that you're doing. Right, and a lot of people, and that example is very important because when you're on chemotherapy, your, your liver is working overtime. Right. And then you put frankincense in there or any other step that you try to do for, for detoxification, you increase the activity of the liver even exponentially more. Right. And that is where you'll start to have a lot of health conditions because you'll overwork it and maybe even create some failure issues. And so that's not a very thing. And that's, again, why I always point back to having that expert in your corner. <laughs> because uh, this is a very powerful opportunity for you to really change your health, but you've got to have somebody that can guide you that has the, the, the wherewith, that has the understanding to know how to incorporate these, how to cut them, how to make sure that they're therapeutic. One of the things I love about what we do with essential oils in the office with, with, your, with your services is we create custom blends for yes. our office. Yes. You know, as, our, as we've done that with our patients, one of the things I can't even keep in stock is our pain oil. Yeah. Uh, I have, I have a patient, I'll share a story with her. She, she took it and she came in for some back pain. I, tr I treated her chiropractically, we got out of it. Uh, she went home feeling fantastic. I said, take this oil with you. If, you know, it was a long weekend. I said, if something happens, well, we're not gonna be able to get you back in the office. This will take care of you until you can get back to me in the office. And she said, I was the healer for everybody that weekend. Everybody that had a pain, I used it, and I healed everybody. Everybody was coming to me. So she came about like three more bottles of it. Wow. And so when you look at that, um, it's really funny because it, I have the confidence in putting that on the shelf because I know how we've cut it. Yeah. I know that it's not harmful. It's a very healing, and it won't make, it, make a, an overload in the body in any way, shape, or form. So it's a very safe application. Uh, and we have other blends that we're, we're working on now that I'm really excited about. Uh, as we, if, if you haven't checked anything out in the office, definitely do that because we have some really cool custom blends coming that are going to be uh, a phenomenal opportunity for you. But again, always the most important step when it comes to essential oils and safety is get someone involved that's an expert that can walk you through the steps of what you really need versus what you don't how to cut it, how to prepare it, how to get it into your body properly yes. so that you can utilize that. And again, using the right products as you go through, using and making sure that they are the right things to do. Um, and talk to me about the custom blends a little bit. Share with that because we do a lot of that stuff. Why are the, can you explain why they're so important? Well, custom blends are important because everybody is different. Everybody has a different body chemistry. Everybody has different sensitivities or you may have allergies. So when I sit with somebody and maybe they're trying to target something very specifically, mm -hmm. well, I'm able to take their information and look at the properties of the essential oils and what's going on inside their body and, and you know, custom blend them something that's going to work for them specifically. So it's, it's you know, very different than just taking something out of the bottle. It's, it, it's making it personal for yourself. But I do have to mention, I tell this to all of my clients, nutrition is backbone. 
if you you know if you decide that you're going to go on this healing journey and you do want it to incorporate essential oils as a part of your life i mean by all means what we're doing here diffusing it's it's a beautiful way of bringing essential oils into your life into your home into your office but when you start you know taking things and you're going to put them onto your body you know if you're not if you don't have a good nutritional program in place if you're not you know drinking enough water you're actually going to take one step forward and two steps back yes and that's that's creates that alistair allosteric load that can create problems in the body which is huge but the custom blends and these types of things are all and i was just going to ask you about that too we will in a second this this aromatherapy that we're doing and it's diffusing but uh, um, when you talk about that, the custom blends and being specific to that person, that's really meeting you where you're at. Yes. Finding out what your health goals are, what your health challenges are, and developing a specific plan of how to integrate these to add to what you're doing for your health. Yes. And okay. nutrition is a component of that. Detoxification is a component of that. And that's all what you're going to get in the office. We have programs that integrate all these things into your health plan. And so you can really have a, a, an exponentially exceptional result rather than taking those two steps back and so that's what's really good so we're diffusing something here and I've always talked about when I was going through chiropractic school I used rosemary when I was diffusing things so that I was ready for my test much more and able to get the material into my brain and prepared for the test that I had coming talk to us about this this is a great strategy to start with too Oh, just well. Again, it, it, this is this is what aromatherapy is. So as you're you're taking this, you know, there's there's those um, essential oil molecules that are going in, and <clears throat> they're going right into the limbic system, which is beyond the blood-brain barrier, and that is the seat of the emotions. It's it's in in the brain. It's actually located in the amygdala gland, and that's where you're going to notice that that difference. And you know, you using uh, rosemary essential oil in chiropractic school, where they just came out with a study that rosemary verbenin. It's very specific because there's a lot of different rosemaries that are out there. But they have found that that, that one oil has increased brain activity 75%. So they're using that with Alzheimer's patients now. Alzheimer's patients? Dementia. Tell me that's not something that parents can do for their kids when they're studying for final exams at school or preparing for big exams or college students that are out there. Something very simple that you can do to really oh. give yourself an edge, an advantage to get in there and get the job done much more effectively. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially for children, especially for coming home from school or just even, you know, just being in school. Because um, you can you can have much more success with ADD than you can with, with drugs. Yeah. And there's a study that um, you know, I had gotten my hands on, and they, what they did is they actually took children that had ADD, and they started to diffuse three different oils at each time. And again, we're just talking about basic diffusing. We're not putting anything on anybody's body, but they did this in a classroom setting, and they took lavender oil. And they found that 84%, uh, I believe, of the students um, had a positive uh, result with the lavender oil where they were able to sit there and focus. That's awesome. And then they went to another oil. It's what I call the brain oil. It is, <laughs> it, 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 this is what has helped me retain all my information is cedarwood oil. And they diffuse cedarwood oil in a classroom setting. 92% of those children had a positive result, able to sit there and focus. But then there's, it is the granddaddy for ADD, and that's vetiver oil. Vetiver, it's a very strong smelling oil, but they took vetiver and they diffused that in the classroom. 100% of the students had a positive effect from vetiver oil. And that, you know, that, that's that, huge. That's huge. That shows that's you huge. the power and, and, and the opportunity. And again, that's not putting it on your, on your body, so it's not going to create right. all the safety issues that we've been talking right. about here recently. But it's going to give you an opportunity to really advance your health, advance your situation, and address some issues uh, that can happen. So, so we're definitely excited about that for sure. Uh, going through that, we talked a lot about blends. We've talked about all those types of things. You know, I want to talk about Pat because some of the things you do is you you do you perform raindrop therapy in our yes. office. Yes, I you do. You know, among all the other things, making the custom essential oil blends. Um, you work within with our uh, patients that run our life and balance programs. Um, talk to us about raindrop therapy because we haven't covered that yet. Raindrop therapy, okay. Um, in, in a nutshell, what that is, is that it's the layering of nine different essential oils over the um, Vitaflex points on your feet that correspond to your spine and through your spine. And what that does, the very first thing that it does is it detoxes the body. So they're very specific oils that are that are used. Um, this was a technique that was developed um, 
Well, it was developed by, uh, actually it was developed by Indians. And then there's a multi-level marketing company that just took it to the next level. And they, in each one of the companies, they have their own aspect of it. But I happen to do the raindrop therapy. But one of the things that it helps to do is that it helps to release launched emotions. So a lot of people will have an emotional experience and sometimes they'll happen a couple days later because those essential oils can last in your body up to 72 hours afterwards. Yeah. So it's a very powerful therapy and a treatment paradigm that we can utilize. Yes. So definitely awesome. Um, going through all the things that we've covered today, uh, you know, the basics of what we're trying to cover is this is a powerful, powerful opportunity for you to shift your health, utilize essential oils to advance some of the treatments that you might be doing to add to what you're doing. But the keys here are to come into the office or find someone that is an expert that can sit with you, go through the process of understanding what your challenges are, what we need to make sure we can take care of. Anything else you want to add today? Oh my goodness, and one, the one thing, <laughs> there's too many things I would like to add. Um, I think the one thing that I would like to tell people is to just do your research. Do your research. Just because you read something on Pinterest doesn't mean that it's good. You know, you really do need to do your research. You know, go on to the websites of the essential oil companies. You know, look for their sourcing. You know, see if they have those GC reports. You may not know how to read them, and that doesn't matter, but it's important to see their transparency that they have behind their product. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, all right. Well, thank you very much for showing in or uh, tuning in this week. You can get us again at Create a Vibrant Life, Cry Create a Vibrant Healthy Life uh, on Blogger and uh, go to our website, vibrantlifehealthcenter.com, or even call the office at 683 8177 uh, to schedule your opportunity to meet with us and see how we can turn this powerful opportunity into uh, uh, another point of health for you. Mm -hmm.